Good morning and welcome. With a little bit of good news, our technical team just informed us that uh, Zoom is operational. So those wanting to be participants in, through Zoom, you can do it. We'll begin with hymn number 151. In speechless prayer and reverence, dear Lord, I come to thee. My heart with love thou fillest, yea, with humility. My bread and wine thou art, with thee I hold communion. Thy presence healeth me. Number 151. The scriptural selection is from the Acts. Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you're too superstitious. For I passed by and beheld your devotions, and I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he, giving, he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed 
and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord if haply they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us for in him we live and move and have our being let's pray silently for a moment or two we are going to follow that with the Lord's Prayer with its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook you may also find it on page 59 of the Christian Science Quarterly Beverly will lead the audience into reading out loud each verse of the prayer which appears in bold letters and I will in turn read the spiritual interpretation of the verse let's pray Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. For God is infinite all power all life truth love over all and all our second hymn this morning is number 298 this is a poem written by the discoverer and founder of christian science mary baker eddy entitled communion hymn which was put to music. Saw ye my Savior? Heard ye the glad sound? Felt ye the power of the word? Was the truth that made us free and was found by you and me in the life and the love of our Lord. Mourner, it calls you Come to my bosom. Love wipes your tears all away and will lift the shade of gloom and for you make radiant room midst the glories of one endless day. Sinner, it calls you. Come to this fountain. Cleanse the foul senses within. Tis the spirit that makes pure, that exalts thee and will cure all thy sorrow and sickness and sin. 
strongest deliverer, friend of the friendless, life of all being divine. Thou the Christ, and not the creed, thou the truth in thought and deed, thou the water, the bread, and the wine. Number 298. all again a very warm welcome to this church service. This church is one of the worldwide branches of the Mother Church, the first Church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We also meet on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. to share experiences and healings resulting from the study and application of Christian science. During our Sunday services, children and teenagers are gathered nearby in our Sunday school. They are learning to apply Christian science to their daily, daily lives. This church also provides a free public reading room as a loving outreach to our community. Here, the Bible and the Christian science textbook and other authorized Christian science literature may be studied borrowed or purchased. Hours of the reading room are posted in the lobby. Everyone is welcome to attend our services. Use the reading room 
and bring the children to Sunday school. The members of this church are invited to attend a business meeting tomorrow night via Zoom at 8 p.m. Link to attend the meeting and the necessary documents will be sent by the clerk tomorrow on that day. And today, because it is Sacrament Sunday, the order of the service is going to be a little different than usual. We will now have the collection. The music for that will be Amazing Grace, played by our organist, Dan. Then we will have the solo, play, you know, and our interpreters are Dan and Eli. And now we will read the tenets of Christian science. One, as adherents of truth, we take the inspired word of the Bible as our sufficient guide to eternal life. Two, we acknowledge and adore one supreme and infinite God. We acknowledge his Son, one Christ, the Holy Ghost or Divine Comforter, and in God's image, and, and man, in God's image and likeness. We acknowledge God's forgiveness of sin in the destruction of sin and the spiritual understanding that casts out evil as unreal. But the belief in sin is punished so long as the belief lasts. Four, we acknowledge Jesus' atonement as the evidence of divine efficacious love, unfolding man's unity with, love, with God through Christ Jesus, the way shore. And we acknowledge that man, that man is saved through Christ, through truth, life, and love, as demonstrated by the Galilean prophet in healing the sick and overcoming sin and death. Five. We acknowledge that the crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection served to uplift faith to understand eternal life, even the allness of soul, spirit, and the nothingness of matter. Six, and we solemnly promise to watch and pray for that mind to be in us which was also in Christ Jesus, to do unto others as we would have them do unto us, and to be merciful, just, and pure. And now for the collection and solo.
Thank you, Dan and Eli, for the most inspired performance of the Lord's Prayer and Amazing Grace. I'm going to read something that is called the explanatory note, and it is a statement that is read before the sermon at every Christian science service around the world. And it says, Friends, the Bible and the Christian science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible texts in their spiritual import, an application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses, and divinely authorized. The lesson sermon for today begins on page 8 of the Christian Science Quarterly. The subject is sacrament. The golden text is from James. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. The responsive readings are from Psalms and 1 Peter and again Beverly will lead the audience into reading out loud what is in bold letters. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in the truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have been ever of old. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach this way. 
All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. The God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. And now for the sermon. The Bible, Psalms. My prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time. O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. The humble shall see this and be glad and your heart shall live that seek God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Second Timothy. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And this announced in the explanatory note, I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. Christian Science demonstrates that none but the pure in heart can see God as the Gospel teaches. Jesus of Nazareth taught and demonstrated man's oneness with the Father. And for this, we owe him endless homage. Explaining and demonstrating the way of divine science, he became the way of salvation to all who accepted his word. We cannot choose for ourselves, but must work out our salvation in the way Jesus taught, in meekness and might. He was find, found preaching the gospel to the poor. We walk in the footsteps of truth and love 
by following the example of our master in the understanding of divine metaphysics. Matthew. Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy. And he healed them. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Science and Health. Meekness and charity have divine authority. What we most need is the prayer of fervent desire for growth in grace expressed in patience, meekness, love, and good deeds. The habitual struggle to be always good is unceasing prayer. Its motives are made manifest in the blessings they bring. Blessings which even if not acknowledged in audible words, attest our worthiness to be partakers of love. Whatever inspires with wisdom, truth, or love, be it song, sermon, or science, blesses the human family with crumbs of comfort from Christ's table, feeding the hungry and giving living waters to the thirsty. Jesus marked out the way. Through the magnitude of his human life, he demonstrated the divine life. Out of the amplitude of his pure affection, he defined love. With the affluence of truth, he vanquished error. The world acknowledged not his righteousness, seeing it not. But earth received the harmony his glorified example introduced. Who is ready to follow his teaching and example? All must sooner or later plant themselves in Christ, the true idea of God. It is the living Christ, the practical truth, which makes Jesus the resurrection and the life to all who follow him indeed. 
the Gospels of John and Luke. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he took bread, and gave thanks, and brake it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. He that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. Science and Health Jesus' teaching and practice of truth involved such a sacrifice as makes us admit its principle to be loved. The true sense is spiritually lost if the sacrament is confined to the use of bread and wine. The disciples had eaten, yet Jesus prayed and gave them bread. This would have been foolish in a literal sense, but in its spiritual signification, it was natural and beautiful. His followers, sorrowful and silent, anticipating the hour of their master's betrayal, partook of the heavenly manna, which of old had fed in the wilderness the perse persecuted followers of truth. Their bread indeed came down from heaven. It was the great truth of spiritual being, healing the sick and casting out error. Their master had explained it all before, before, and now this bread was feeding and sustaining them. They had borne this bread from house to house, breaking, explaining it to others, and now it comforted themselves. For this truth of spiritual being, their master was about to suffer violence and drain to the dregs his cup of sorrow. He must leave them. With the great glory of an everlasting victory overshadowing him, he gave thanks and said, Drink ye all of it. Our Eucharist is spiritual communion with the one God. Our bread, which cometh down from heaven, is truth. Our cup is the cross. Our wine, the inspiration of love, the draft our master drank and commended to his followers. 
Luke. And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow, and said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Science and Health When the human element in him struggled with the divine, our great teacher said, not my will, but thine be done. That is, let not the flesh, but the spirit be represented in me. This is the new understanding of spiritual love. It gives all for Christ or truth. It blesses its enemies. Heals the sick, casts out error, raises the dead from trespasses and sins, and preaches the gospel to the poor, the meek in heart. During his night of gloom and glory in the garden, Jesus realized the utter error of a belief in any possible possible material intelligence. The pangs of neglect and staves of bigoted ignorance smote him sorely. His students slept. He said unto them, Could you not watch with me one hour? Could they not watch with him who waiting and struggle in voiceless agony held uncomplaining guard over a world. There was no response to that human yearning. And so, Jesus turned forever away from earth to heaven, from sense to soul. While we adore Jesus, and the heart overflows with gratitude for what he did for mortals, treading alone his loving pathway up to the throne of glory in speechless agony, exploring the way for us. Yet Jesus spares us not one individual experience. If we follow his commands faithfully, And all have the cup of sorrowful effort to drink in proportion to their demonstration of his love till all are redeemed through divine love. Mark. And straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And it was the third hour and they crucified him. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top 
to the bottom. And now when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And he brought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a sepulcher which was hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulcher. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph beheld where he was laid. Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, he is risen. Now when Jesus was risen, early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with them, as he, they mourned and wept. Science and Health The resurrection of the great demonstrator of God's power was the proof of his final triumph over body and matter and gave full evidence of divine science, evidence so important to mortals. His disciples believed Jesus to be dead while he was hidden in the sepulcher, whereas he was alive, demonstrating within the narrow, within the narrow tomb the power of spirit to overrule mortal material sense. There were rock-ribbed walls in the way, and a great stone must be rolled from the cave's mouth. But Jesus vanquished every material obstacle, overcame every law of matter, and stepped forth from his gloomy resting place, crowned with the glory of a sublime success, an everlasting victor. The persecutors had failed to hide immortal truth and love in a sepulcher. In our age, Christianity is again demonstrating the power of divine principle, as it did over 1900 years ago, by healing the sick and triumphing over death. It is only when the so-called pleasures and pains of sense pass away in our lives that we find unquestionable signs of the burial of error and the resurrection to spiritual life. Every day makes its demands upon us for higher proofs rather than professions of Christian power. These proofs consist solely in the destruction of sin, sickness, and death by the power of spirit as Jesus destroyed them. This is an element of progress. And progress is the law of God whose law demands of us only what we can certainly fulfill. Psalms. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. John. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, 
and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Acts. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. 2 Corinthians The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Science and Health Through all the disciples experienced, they became more spiritual and understood better what the Master had taught. His resurrection was also the resurrection. It helped them to raise themselves and others from spiritual dullness and blind belief, and blind belief in God into the perception of infinite possibilities. They needed this quickening, for soon their dear master would rise again in the spiritual realm of reality and ascend far above their apprehension. What a contrast between our Lord's Last Supper and his last spiritual breakfast with his disciples in the bright morning hours at the joyful meeting on the shore of the Galilean Sea. His gloom had passed into glory and his disciples' grief into repentance, hearts, hearts chastened, and prized rebuked. This spiritual meeting with our Lord in the dawn of a new light is the morning meal which Christian scientists commemorate. They bow before Christ's truth to receive more of his reappearing and silently to commune with the divine principle, love. If all who seek his commemoration through material symbols will take up the cross, heal the sick, cast out evils and preach Christ or truth to the poor, the receptive thought, they will bring in the millennium. The miracle of grace is no miracle to love. invite the audience to kneel silently in sign of sign of humility and we will repeat together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our last hymn is the doxology, hymn number one. Be thou, O God, exalted high, and as thy glory fills the sky, so let it be on earth displayed till thou art here and now obeyed. Number one. I will read now the scientific statement of being taken from the Christian Science textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. And the correlative scripture from 1 John. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Second John. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Amen. Amen.